Dana White Contender Series 2024 Week 9. Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. I am Andy. Let's get into it. We're going to break down the five fights. We've got some interesting fights here. Uh, while you guys are watching, if you could, hit the like button. Uh, tell me who you like this week. Uh, this is a bettable card. Very, very bettable card. I'm not even going to do a special code word because uh, I want to hear who you guys like in this one. Um, I think there's a lot of ways to attack this card, so we'll go over this, and I'll uh, tell you guys about a nice special that we're running over at Wager Talk. But let's start with the very first fight, really fun one, Anthony Drillich and Sean Gauchi. Uh, we'll start with Drillich here, 8-1, and one, coming out of Eternal MMA, a league I always like supporting uh, fighters in. Really good quality of competition. Um, even when they're fighting guys, you know, 4-4, four and four, you know, um, it's 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 just good competition. It's much better than some of the other leagues that we see guys coming out out here. Uh, Sean Gauchi's coming out of Hex Fighting Series again. I like it. Uh, he's got a win. I know it was in 2017, but a win against Steve Ursig, obviously a blue chipper there. So um, again, at the start of his career, not a ton of uh, great fights, but you know, two and zero, and then a ten and four win in the the, the Hex Fight Series. So. Uh, what do I see with these two guys? Well, <clears throat> I think they're pretty similar in a lot of ways. I give Gauchi, I rate him just a little bit higher than Drillich, kind of everywhere. So in the end, I, I, I do like I do like him a little bit better than Drillich. And the biggest thing for me is just the lack of volume from, from Drillich, man. He will go a long time without throwing a strike. He's very, very patient, almost too patient. He waits for a big explosion, and when he hits it, it hits it. He'll put you to sleep. Um, that's what he did in his last two fights here. Um, but it, it just, he doesn't set him up. You know, it's it's not a, there's not a lot of body shots, a lot of kicks. It's, you know, he waits for the guy to come forward and then, you know, kind of fires in really quick. Um, he doesn't look like he has the power that he does, but he's very, very strong. So I, I don't underestimate his power. What I do, what I'm not that impressed with is his volume, his ability to set up strikes. And I just haven't really seen him clinch that effectively. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Gauchi, I think he's got a little bit more volume. I've seen him clinch. I've seen him wrestle a little bit. Um, he's got pretty good power as well. So I, I don't think he's going to be, you know, less powerful than Drillich. I just think his attack is a little bit more real, well-rounded if he can just stay away from that huge monster shot that Drillich is going to try and land on him. Um, face-offs, really, really nice. Kind of little surprise that uh, I thought Gauchi was bigger than him. I don't I don't think I totally expected it, but he, I think he's going to have the size advantage. So um, I think Gauchi in this one uh, over Drillich. Both, both pretty good, but I would like to see Drillich with a little bit more a little bit more volume, a little bit more of attack, because I think he's got uh, some some really good skills. I just need to need to see more of it. Uh, Dolatov and Antonunez don't blink in this fight. Dolatov, I, I think it comes down to Cody Steele and Dolatov, who's most UFC ready. I think Dolatov is. You're getting pretty big odds on Dolatov, and I I think that this one is kind of warranted. Striking, powerful, accurate. He's got a ground game uh, to go along with it. He's got knockouts. He's got submissions. So he can finish you just about anywhere. Um, really, really good energy and good cardio for at least the first round. That's the one thing about Dolatov is we just really haven't seen him face adversity going into rounds two and three. So um, he's 10 and one, and we go down this list, and you just see, you know, round one finish. He did – he, he did – Boxing, which with the distance, I guess you could kind of say, well, he went the distance. Um, but you go back to MMA, round one, round one, round one, round one, round two, round one, round one. You get the point. So um, I, 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 you, you're rolling the dice that he's going to have cardio or he's going to get Antonudez out of there early. And I think that's what he does. I, I'm not that impressed with Antonudez. I, he gets the win over Neto, but... I, I didn't think he looked that great. He doesn't have a big variety of attacks. It's kind of one shot down the middle. Um, congratulations to him for winning uh, the Conqueror versus Favela Combat um, against this Wendell Oliveira, who's l just looked awful. Uh, so I just, I, I don't, like, Itzy Nunes has power, but he's going to be slower. Um, he's going to have to come out and stun Dolatov early in the fight. Otherwise, Dolatov's just going to be on him. He's going to be shooting. Um, he's going to be landing a lot of strikes. And um, based on what I saw in Neto's last fight, 
which wasn't that long ago. It was earlier this year. I just don't think he's going to have the cardio or speed to keep up with Dolotov. Dolotov, uh, I, 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 I struggle with picking fights to go under. There's a couple of them in this, on this card I think goes under. This might be one of them. Uh, Dolotov, big-time odds, but I do expect him to get the win. Pinto and Camacho. Uh, Pinto and Camacho, single best uh, face-off and stare-down in Contender Series history, I think. If you haven't watched it, that was earlier today. I'm recording this on Monday afternoon. Uh, that was amazing. That was you, – you should go watch that on YouTube. <laughs> the stare-down was, <laughs> was great. Uh, Pinto is the huge favorite. Got to be honest, I think you're asking for trouble if you're putting Pinto in your parlays. So, A, great photo. Uh, of, of Pinto doesn't match his fighting style. So here's the thing. In, in, in these last two fights, it was very slow, flat-footed, didn't throw a lot of, of, of strikes. But these two fights were five-rounders, and I got the feeling he was just doing his best to kind of manage his energy, make sure he didn't get really tired. I just didn't think he looked that great. Um, RS took him down, like picked him up and took him down. RS is a shorter, stockier. Yeah, he's a strong guy, but... I just didn't think he did enough damage uh, for me to be really blown away and, and really be impressed. So he's low volume. He can get taken down. And at minus 600, that is a recipe for disaster. Um, Lucas Camacho. Um, I kind of like, like Camacho here. He's got KO power. I liked his pace that he had uh, in, in this last fight in LFA. I think he's a live dog here. Um, when I'm looking at Pinto, I think he's going to throw hard, but I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of volume early. And Camacho is the same size, which Pinto's kind of used to being the bigger guy. I was, I was surprised how big Camacho is at faceoffs. Uh, if, if I'm going out on a limb here, I think this is a sneaky fight to go the distance. I think these guys are, are, are pretty tough and I'm not sure after the first round, they're going to have the KO power. So if, you're, if it's going to be finished, it's going to be finished in the first round. But don't be surprised if these guys kind of go, go, go at it pretty good in the first round and then the volume kind of slows down. And then you're looking at a really, really close decision. And then I would just be really happy to be uh, holding a Camacho ticket if it goes, if it goes the distance. So um, not that impressed with Pinto. I'm certainly not minus 600 impressed with him. So if you're looking for an underdog, and some of these big-time – underdogs have been hitting this season. I think Camacho might be the guy uh, this this week. Cody Steele and Chase and Blair. Cody Steele, obviously the big time uh, prospect. Uh, he was supposed to fight earlier this season. Opponent dropped out like right at the last second. Dana just completely called <laughs> called out uh, the opponent. Uh, Dana, th that's, that's to me, that's Dana White when he's at his best. So uh, Steele gets promised another fight. Blair taking this on short notice. I got to be honest. I like Chase and Blair. Uh, I don't know if he's going to win this fight, but I hope he gets rewarded by the UFC for taking this on short notice and for taking on a prospect like Cody Steele. Like I said, I think Cody Steele and Dulatov are the two most uh, UFC ready on this card. I think you could argue either one. Um, Blair has incredible submissions. Um, when he gets on the ground, they can come out of nowhere. It is really, really good on the ground. Um, he's got power. We've seen him win by knockout. We've seen him win by submission. I don't think he's a pushover here. I think most people are going to be on Cody Steele. I'm going to pick Cody Steele. I don't think it's as confident as, as most people uh, most people think it's going to be. That being said, Cody Steele can do it all. He can strike. Uh, he can wrestle. I actually think he's going to be better as a striker in this match. Uh, Jim, who I, you guys know Jim, well, I do all the all the uh, UFC videos and Contender Series videos with. Uh, he kind of he's, he said the same thing. He's like, I think Steele's going to keep this on the feet and win as a striker. I'm not sure he wants to wrestle and get this to the ground because that's where Blair's going to be at Blair's best. Um, I was surprised how bigger Cody Steele is than Blair at uh, at weigh-ins, and that's going to be a, a pretty big deal. So the pick is going to be Cody Steele. I think he keeps this on the feet. I think he wins a, a, a striking contest. If Steele implements the wrestling and gets on the ground, I would say that's the danger area because Blair is very, very good there. So um, we'll, we'll, see that, we'll, we'll see what Steele's game plan is. Don't rule out Blair. I think uh, if he, even if he loses, I think we will see him at some point 
either get another shot on contender series, maybe get a last second chance in UFC for taking this. But um, uh, I don't think this is a Cody Steele absolute romp, uh, but I do think he ends up getting the win. Uh, if you guys could hit the like button, tell me who you like in the comments section. I told you guys about a uh, special that we have going on. We do have a contender series best bet for clients. We're just doing one official client play. So everything that I say in this video, um, take for a grain of salt. If you want our official best bet, that is up at wagertalk.com. Uh, 21 and 10 MMA run. That's over the last three months. We're 136 units, all sports. 2024, we do have our UFC 5% best bet. That is up uh, four and one in our last five, five percent UFC plays. So those have been good. Uh, the special that we're running seven days of winning for seventy-seven dollars, so just eleven dollars a day. It's a great deal this week because we do have a Monday night football play. If you're watching this on Monday, we do have an official Dana White contender series play. I'm recording this on Monday. We have already cashed a couple darts plays in the darts tournament. Um, if you guys know our darts plays, they're absolutely fantastic. We're probably going to have more. We've already had a couple of tennis plays. You're going to get all of our NFL plays. Also, our college football bet of the week. We're 5-1 and one this year on those. We only do one college football play per week. We started this last season. We're 18-5 and five since we started doing that. 5-1 and one this season. Really proud of all that. The best part about this seven days for 77 is if we don't have any plays on a day, like let's say Wednesday we don't have any plays, your – your seven days gets extended another day. So this isn't just seven days. This is seven days of days that we have bets on where we could be below volume at times. But if we don't have any plays on a day, you don't get charged for that. It moves on uh, to the end of the seven days. So um, lock that in. You get a 5% play included with it. The 5% play is 35 bucks. So imagine getting a 5% play and then just for you know, a few dollars more, you're getting all sports. Uh, we went 1-0. In NFL over the weekend, we're coming off of an 11 unit win week last week. So, encourage everyone to take advantage of that over at wagertalk.com. Uh, just use a shortcut slash al. And thanks everyone for watching. Let's break down this main event. Um, Artem, I believe it's called Vaktov uh, against Masrat. So, here's my theory is they're just going back and just trying to find anybody and everybody that Alex Prayer has fought. <laughs> let's try and get him in UFC. It's very similar to what they did with Alex Pereira. It's like, let's go get everyone that Izzy's fought. And then they found, <laughs> they get Alex Pereira in here. So um, notice it, the two-in-one record. Yes, that is MMA. But this guy's got a long, long history of kickboxing. So he's no, he's no stranger to uh, the fight game. Um, he loses. Uh, he gets hurt in his uh, UFC debut. He's... I, I'm, just, I'm telling you, I can't wait to watch this guy fight in MMA because it's just so obvious he's a kickboxer. His stance is a little awkward for MMA, um, but he's got he's got really insane power. Um, in, in his, I'm calling this his first fight because he got you know, he got hurt a minute in. Um, <laughs> this guy tries to rush in, and boxed off just kind of kind of awkwardly kind of throws him to the ground, jumps on top of him, and just <laughs> beats the shit out of him <laughs> from full mount. Um, and then this poor guy, <laughs> Bakatov kicked him twice, and the guy quit. He was like, dive out. I'm out of here. Thanks very much for the payday. Um, got paid in rubles or whatever they get paid in uh, in that league. <laughs> but I, so we li listen, we really haven't seen too much of him in MMA. What do we know? He's got massive, massive power. His kicks are dynamite. Um, he looked good. Uh, he looked good sitting on top of this guy, uh, pounding his head through the mat. I wouldn't say it was the most skillful <laughs> in the world, um, but whatever. It got the job done. Uh, who's he fighting? He's fighting a guy who's not very good. Um, this guy's 3 0. Uh, this head kick, the fight lasted 10 seconds. He kicked him once, and the guy like felt like was, was over. Um, so he's got three wins here. He just he's only got two amateur bouts, so experience wise, Vaktov's just got him got him covered. Uh, Vaktov's the the big time favorite. This is another fight. I'm not really sure how this thing goes the distance. Uh, these guys are just going to throw punches and throw kicks. Masrov is probably going to come balls to the wall because he does not want to eat any of these leg kicks. Like one might be too many, um, and if. If Artem lands so many of those leg kicks, I've, this Masrov guy is probably going to uh, be running for the fences. So the pick is Vakatov by KO. Um, 
no, we're not taking submission. This is one of those – we always say take inside the distance. Don't try and pick, like, like you know, submission or KO. Uh, but for this one, you can pick KO. Um, if you want to do double chance, you can do KO or decision. Uh, but I don't see how this – I don't see how Masaroff – like, I, I don't see how he wins. Unless he has this crazy takedown game, which is always a possibility against kickboxers. Maybe he implements the wrestling and Bakatov looks like – fish out of water. I haven't seen Masaroff try and take anybody down. So maybe he surprises us, but I expect this to be a striking uh, fight where somebody gets knocked out. And my guess is it's Masaroff getting knocked out. So, all right, let's do a little bit of um, recap here. Again, official play that I am betting with my own money. My clients are betting with their own money. There's only one play that is up at wagertalk.com. But uh, recap for this video. Um, Alin Gauchi. I got it. I I think this one could go the distance here. Uh, Drillich has got a lot of chaos. So does Gauchi, but these guys are these guys are pretty equal. So this wouldn't surprise me if it uh, made the distance. Dolatov, I think, uh, runs th runs through Antonunez. If you're betting Dolatov, make sure you have your live lines on and watch just in case Dolatov gets in round two and maybe he does have big cardio issues. I think he wins this fight pretty convincingly. But make sure you always have your live lines on. Um, I think Camacho could be a live dog here and could pull off the upset over Pinto. Um, just haven't really, really been that impressed with, with Mario. I know he's 8-0, but uh, I don't know. He's fighting a guy that's 6-0 and at minus 600. Uh, the line is just crazy. So Cody Steele, Chase and Blair. I think this fight's a little bit closer than people think. Blair's got an incredible submission game. I'm going to lean ever so slightly. Cody Steele, uh, UFC loves him. UFC surely is wanting him to win. I uh, expect him to be, to keep it on the feet. So it's a lean to Cody Steele. And then uh, Vakatov, I have Vakatov winning um, probably by KO. So uh, I'm most excited to see him. I got to be honest, he looked, he looked like he's really getting in shape. He looked a little pudgy in his last fight, but at face-offs, he it, it looked, it looked a little trim. Um, so maybe he's, maybe he's ready to make a run in the UFC. If he wins, th this is, I tell you what, if, if, if <laughs> this is the quickest a contract the UFC will ever sign is is if the guy that beat Alex Pereira wins, yeah, he's getting fast tracked into the UFC. You don't even need to leave, you don't even need to lead leave the octagon, Artem. You're getting that contract if you win. So, all right, guys, that's gonna do it. Thanks very much for watching. Good luck on your place, and we will see everyone later.